Hello everyone, this is uh, something a bit different today. Usually this channel focuses on hi-fi and uh, audio electronics, but today we're going to be looking at uh, a Linux desktop, uh, specifically Bunsen Labs. Uh, Bunsen Labs is based on an older distribution uh, called Crunchbang Linux. Uh, that uh, unfortunately folded quite a few years ago now when the developer decided not to continue with that project and Bunsen Labs is effectively the community continuing to uh, develop and maintain that. So that's what we have on the desktop here today. Uh, I only really switched to Linux probably ooh, nine or ten months ago and in that time I've probably used 30 or more Linux distributions uh, all installed actually on the system itself so no virtual machines just to uh, see what was out there test things out and I have to say that most of those distributions worked absolutely fine uh, there were no absolute disasters um, but having tried uh, pretty much every different environment that's out there I would say it came down to two as the kind of mainstay and one of those uh, was KDE Plasma uh, the Plasma 5 desktop which I really like and particularly Kubuntu which is the uh, canonical version of that that's currently out um, but also Bunsen Labs which is um, quite different in that Kubuntu KDE is a kind of full full on full fat desktop and this is very much the kind of slimmed down simple desktop environment that's designed to be quick and lean and not too heavy on system resources so that's what we've got here today um, so I walk around this uh, this is not quite what it looks like out of the box it's been uh, I've themed this and mucked around with the configuration files to get it just the way that I like it to be uh, so um, over on the right hand side there you'll see we've got a con key running here which is showing some system information and then down below we've got some hotkey commands there which will launch various applications and I'll show you what um, we've got installed on this system uh, as we go through. Uh, I really 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 dislike clutter uh, so and that includes in applications so for example you'll see a common theme occurring through most of these applications that they'll be extremely simple um, with an uncluttered interface uh, so I think that fits in well with the overall desktop environment so um, let's get cracking so as you can see here we've got various keys uh, which will launch various applications here um, what we start with is just literally the super key so if we just press uh, the Windows key that launches the open box menu now I should have said at the beginning that Crunchbang and now Bunsen Labs is based on Debian it's based on Debian stable as the kind of uh, main underlying system and then on top of that you've got the desktop environment which in this case is a window manager called Openbox and that's combined with a panel called the Tint2 panel which you can see down at the bottom here um, by default that comes at the top and it's I've moved it because I actually prefer it to, on the bottom of the screen now the menu as you say you can hit the super key and launch it or you can right click on the desktop and launch it um, uh, this has been adjusted slightly so that uh, the fade effect that you usually get when you move the cursor down here has been taken away so it actually now is really snappy you can see that everything opens as the cursor moves across you can do that by going into the settings and just changing things around a little bit which is what I've done here um, but yeah everything is nicely categorized you've got the main launchers at the top here for the main uh, applications that are used pretty much on a daily basis and then categories down here for things like games which is on steam which we'll, we'll have a look at later accessories and audio testing um, because this is primarily a hi-fi electronics channel i do have some software on this machine um, which is only available in windows so in order to be able to run that this is using a system called wine uh, which is a, a layer which allows you to use windows applications or i should say some windows applications within a linux uh, desktop environment um, it's set up to run fairly transparently we'll launch some of these later and I'll show you these are specialist audio applications so you can't get these in Linux so unfortunately uh, we have to be using the Windows versions but um, they work very well um, there's no lag uh, everything works as it should so we'll see that but anyway let's get on with looking at some of these uh, 
application. So we've seen the, the main launcher here, so super key launches that. Um, we've also got another menu system here called D menu, and we launch that as you can see from the Conky here by pressing Alt F3. So if we do Alt F3 on here, top of the screen you can see D menu will launch, and that's basically going to search for any particular application that we want to find on the system. So this is being recorded using an application called Simple Screen Recorder. So for example, if we start to type simple, you'll see the categories that could possibly fit that will come up listed here and we can just go across. And if we were to hit enter, those would, uh, that would launch that particular application. Obviously we've already got that running currently, so we don't want to be doing that again. Uh, if we then just quit out of that, just escape, that goes away. That's also themed, by the way, so it doesn't uh, it doesn't come in that colour scheme that's designed to fit the scheme that I've got running here, which are these blacks, greys, and kind of slight green tinges that you see around the place here. Um, so that's designed to fit that. It's also been moved because by default it launches at the bottom of your screen. And I've uh, I've changed that so that it now launches at the top, um, which is where I prefer it. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll move down to look at some of these other other things here. So terminal, super key and T will launch the standard terminal. Uh, this is Terminator. I really like this terminal. It's a nice straightforward terminal, but it's very customizable as well. If you right click on the terminal, you'll see here you can go into uh, the various settings here. If you go to preferences, you can customize it to your heart's desire, which is uh, which is really nice. Uh, there's some transparency as you can see in the background there and it's also got um, a small application called NeoFetch running on this system as well which just brings forward some system information and just shows it listed here along with a nice logo for the Bunsen Labs distribution uh, so there's a nice little terminal get rid of that uh, next one we've got is uh, file manager so super key F bring up my file manager and this is Thunar uh, again a nice lightweight simple file manager you'll see again that these are all nice simple uncluttered interfaces as I said at the beginning the sort of thing that I do actually like and the theme which I'll talk about a little bit as we go along um, is one that you I first saw used on Arch Labs which is another distribution based on Arch um, but it uses elements of this desktop within that as well um, and this is very much heavily based on that in fact it is that but adapted by myself to modify the theme uh, to be the way I actually like it one thing I like about this theme as well and the way it integrates with open boxes if I click away from it it undecorates the the window you see the uh, the top bar and uh, icons disappear and then when we come back onto it they reappear they also reappear if you just hover so it's a nice effect uh, the usual home folder entries are, are found in here so your music and your pictures and downloads etc will all appear in there along with some shortcuts down the side so um, yeah it's a nice nice file manager what else have we got here now email clients now there's plenty of those out there to choose from the most common one you'll find on these distributions is something called Thunderbird um, it's not really my cup of tea it's again it's got a it's uh, it's a bit cluttered for my liking. Um, there are too many options. I just like, as you'll see in a moment, I will open the, the mail client. There's nothing uh, nothing secret in there that I don't want to reveal for anybody, but um, we can do that. So it's, uh, it's Geary is the name of the mail client. So Super G will launch it. So as you can see, on the left-hand side here, we've just got the mailboxes. Uh, and I use Gmail and my old Outlook account and then middle column here you've just got the emails in date order and then your preview just appears down here on the right hand side very very simple no clutter just your standard uh, standard icons across the top there for, for delete and archiving and flagging etc searching very very simple uh, so that's gear email uh, next one is notes uh, notes actually 
I've only just installed today, so I'm just getting used to that particular program. But it, in, it launches an application called Simple Note. So super key in. We'll launch that. And as you can see, there's nothing in there yet because I've yet to uh, yet to actually use that. But the um, useful thing about that is it actually allows you to share your notes across different applications, different platforms. So Windows uh, platforms, Android. Uh, I think there's iOS as well. So very, very useful forward to, to using that. Uh, disk utility. Uh, there are two disk utilities installed on this. The one that comes as standard is something called Gparted which lets you look at your disks and your petitions and make various changes to that. Um, that is still installed. It, it's fine. I just happen to prefer the GNOME uh, disk utility. So if we super D you'll see that come up there. Again I just think this is a much nicer, much cleaner looking uh, interface and you can see that on this system here we've got a CD stroke DVD drive we've got the main system disk up here and there's also one terabyte backup stroke media disk attached to this which con contains uh, backups and more importantly about half a terabyte of music which has been collected over the last 30 years or so mostly ripped CDs and we'll talk about those a bit later when we get onto the music application but yeah, I like this um, application. It's, it's nice, straightforward, and uh, very versatile. So moving swiftly on, editor. That's the text editor. So as you might guess by now, Super E. Here's the text editor, and you can see there the last thing I was doing on here. It brings up the last file set of files that you're working on, were the um, key bindings. So. There we go, some key bindings there. That's uh, that's Genie. That's a, a nice uh, nice text editor. Um, Office Suite on this particular machine. Now, most people will install LibreOffice on their machine. It's an excellent uh, program, or should I say set of um, programs, applications. Um, not my cup of tea because it's not quite as well integrated into something like Microsoft Office as I really need it to be. Uh, Office is used at work. It's the program I'm familiar with. And the closest thing I've found to that is uh, WPS Office, which is um, free in the sense it doesn't cost you anything, but unfortunately it's not um, free in the sense of open free software. So it is proprietary, but it's a very nicely designed that set of applications. Um, so SuperO will launch that. Here we go. And as you can see, it basically just looks like um, you've opened Word, Microsoft Word. And if you were to open uh, the spreadsheet and the presentation packages of this, they in turn just look like Microsoft uh, versions of the same programs. But uh, again, nice, uh, nice, simple, easy to use applications. Uh, Media Player. Media Player is on this system is connected to VLC, which most people all know very well. There we go. It just launches VLC for your videos and your, your media. You can play music in VLC, but usually people will have a dedicated music player as I've got on this system. And we'll see that shortly. So uh, indeed, Music Streamer, if we click on this one, so Super S, that launches Spotify. Uh, Spotify, unfortunately, is not available in the Debian repositories because it's uh, it's not uh, free open software. It is proprietary, um, but you can download the either the snap of this or the deb file and install it yourself from the Spotify website. This is the deb file. I prefer those to snaps and flat packs for various reasons that we won't go into today. Uh, but as you can see, it runs really well. Um, your libraries are there, all your, your playlists, etc., that have been collected over the years and added in. But it works really, really nicely on this. So that's the music streaming solution. Now, for audio player, so to actually play music files and CDs, um, now on this system, Super A for audio, Super A launches. A nice little program called Quadlibet. Quadlibet, as you can see, 
the same recurring theme it's nice and simple it's got a very clean interface but it basically lists down here every uh, album that it, it finds on your system you direct it to where your music is stored so in this case it's directed to the secondary drive and to the music folder and it pulls in all this lovely artwork now you can configure this in several ways if you go up to um, I think it's on browse on here you can see here you've got all these options here so you can have list views cover grid views views directly into your file system whichever you prefer I really like the cover view because uh, it's really nice I think and if we go into uh, you click on it there if you hover it will show you information about the actual album you've clicked on And if you actually select it, it lists the tracks here. And I don't know if that comes out on this, but so that's actually playing. But that is quite a bit. Really, really nice program. There's another program on here which um, isn't keyed to anything, which is a really, really lightweight program. It's actually a terminal program and it's called cmuse so we launch that from the terminal and that's what cmuse looks like so it's um it's slightly different in that uh as we go down here as you can see it's extremely fast very responsive this thing will list about half a terabyte of music in less than a minute and catalog it as it's done here so um yeah, you select the uh, album you want so you come down here or rather you select the artist you want and it tells you which uh, which particular albums have been re been released so for example Dr John and these are the albums you can tab across and you can come down and play the music really really fast really lightweight I think that thing's about 10 megabytes that, uh, that particular application uh, extremely good so moving on we've done music stream we've done audio we've got photo manager photo manager is uh, just a cataloging program for photos it does a little bit more than that we use super P for photo launch the program shot well and um, that just catalogues your folders, uh, sorry, catalogues your photos by um, by events, and it links them to dates. So it links them by year. If you click on the year, it will then list them by month. Um, so uh, it does it automatically. It automatically imports and catalogues. Again, a nice simple program. It has basic editing functions. If you select a photo, you can uh, enhance, rotate, publish it to different places. Um, and you can go in here and do various very simple adjustments basically enhancing cropping that kind of thing so nothing too heavyweight there are some applications on here that let you do that uh, something called dark table in particular that can do that but um, this is a really nice simple uh, photo management uh, application so that's uh, that one web browser um, this comes with chromium and firefox by default of the two um, considerations of privacy and whether or not it'd be free and open software aside I prefer chromium so that's actually what uh, what's installed so uh, super W will give you the web browser so there's chromium picks up the uh, dark theming as you can see at the top there um, unfortunately it also picks up today's ridiculous story of the royal wedding but um, we won't go into that today let's just say that it's, the UK has been wrapped up in royal wedding mania all day long and it's been nice to be able to uh, be making a video and escape it but there we are that's chromium I'll quit that um, moving swiftly on we've got task manager task manager is a program called HTOP and uh, so super h and that's basically everything that's running on your system uh, what resources that particular application is using um, in terms of processor usage memory usage etc um, and you 
you can, as you can probably imagine, as we're capturing the desktop here at 60 frames per second, uh, that's uh, that's top of the tree at the moment. But uh, yeah, very useful application. Um, you can kill application from this as well. So if you've got something misbehaving on the system and you need to um, uh, stop it, then uh, this is very useful for that. So there we go. Now I've got Redshift down here. Uh, I, I can enable that, but you won't see it, unfortunately. Basically what that does is it reduces the blue light from the monitor and shifts that more towards the red end of the spectrum. So it's useful for uh, using your PC in the evenings uh, when uh, you don't really to be looking at um, lots of blue light from the screen because that's been shown to interrupt uh, sleep patterns, etc. So uh, you really don't want to be doing that. Uh, Super V will give us the volume control. Now, as you can see, as I'm speaking here, you can see the uh, volume level meters uh, twitching along there. Um, this allows various uh, options. This is uh, uh, so playback. You've got recording. You've got output devices on here. You've got input devices. And you can configure. Uh, so again, all very useful and very simple. Close that. Getting close to the end now. Log out is the next one. That's Super X. We won't actually log out, obviously, because that would be a unfortunate end to this video. Super X brings up the log out menu. So cancel, uh, log out, suspend, reboot, and power off. I like these icons. Um, nothing to do with me. These are supplied with uh, the Bunsen Labs distribution out of the box. Uh, so we'll cancel that because we don't want to quit. Uh, backup. We've got a backup manager installed. Uh, Super B. So Super B will launch uh, the backup program. And that's set to do a weekly backup. Um, and to do that for six months. After six months, what it would then do is go and delete all the incremental backups. Uh, and then basically start again. Um, it takes an overall snapshot of your system first of all and then all it does is then track changes to that on a weekly basis. Um, so uh, obviously you don't need to keep those um, uh, forever and a day. There's a point where you know, the most recent backups are the ones that you're really only going to uh, be interested in uh, along with the uh, the main system backup. So it's, uh, it's quite efficient way of um, you know not overburdening your hard drive with tons and tons of files so a little useful utility uh, we're pretty much there now so we've got um, last one is screenshot and you literally just hit the print screen and up pops the uh, screenshot utility so you can you can time the screenshot you can select which part of the screen you want to capture uh, you can uh, Mainly select parts of the screen, so very useful. So those are the main applications that are linked here uh, to the key bindings, as you can see in the Conkey. Um, there are more applications which are hidden away on the menu here. So for example, we've got GIMP on here. Um, GIMP. This is a flat pack that's installed. It's the latest version, so it's GIMP. Um, I'm in the version of it now, but. Uh, it only came out about two weeks ago, so it's not yet in the Debian repositories. Um, we can launch that. This is Flatpak oh, 2.10. There we go. Um, and that's got the new unified look to it. So no longer we've got the uh, floating boxes for the various elements. It's now all on the one, which is, uh, which is excellent. Fantastic program. Uh, been around for absolutely donkey's years. and. Uh, not had much development on it um, until recently. There's a long period, several years, where not very much happened to GIMP, but um, you could argue it didn't need to happen because it was already uh, a very good application to begin with, but uh, it's, had a, it's had a makeover recently and much the better for it. So what else have we got in here? Oh yeah, testing. So the audio testing. Now these are Windows applications. So let me just show you what happens when you launch a Windows application on Linux with wine in the background. So we'll launch Arta. So Arta, demo mode, is uh, 
an audio testing program. So what this basically will do is it will fire a set of test signals into your audio equipment and you can then measure the outputs of that. And that's basically what this does. Um, and as you can see from there, it, uh, there's no lag. It fired up immediately. It works perfectly. All the ports on this Linux machine function as they should. The audio generator, the audio signals that come out of this uh, this PC under Linux are um, just as they should be. So there is absolutely no interference whatsoever from the wine layer that's sitting between this and the operating system. So that uh, again, that works really well. A bit of a godsend, really, because if this is your only machine, I mean, it happens, it happens not to be, but if it were your only machine and and you were stuck, then it, uh, is a useful way of uh, doing that. The alternative, of course, would be dual boot. So you could run a copy of Windows. The downside for me of doing that is it means you've got to cough up uh, 100 pounds or so to uh, the evil Microsoft. Whereas this way, uh, you don't. You pay the uh, you pay for your application, um, and then you run it uh, on your Linux system. I think that's a preferable way of doing things. Um, now I've got games installed they're under steam so I don't have anything installed separately everything's within steam we'll, we'll fire steam uh, and you'll see it takes a little while to refresh and load here we go so that's the steam steam store uh, I'm not really a gamer so I don't have much uh, on here um, Euro Truck Simulator is uh, something I've been seeing so many people play recently that I just had to find out what the fuss was about. Um, unfortunately, my efforts at Euro Truck Simulator tends to be more like wacky races in that um, everything in front of me on the road gets blasted off the street, um, which is probably not what you're supposed to do when you play that game, but never mind, it's good fun. And um, the three Trine um, games. Um, I only discovered these recently. I actually saw someone online playing them, and the the, the artwork and the uh, scenery on these things is absolutely astounding. Particularly on the third one, absolutely amazing. It was really just for that reason that I decided to uh, to, to load these up and have a go. Um, but yeah, I'm not a gamer. Uh, these are the first games I've probably played in 20, 25 years. So uh, steep learning curve there, but. There we are. All runs absolutely fine on this machine. Uh, the graphics card isn't um, a heavyweight by any means. It's the smallest of the 10 series NVIDIA cards. So it's a passive called half height card. Um, it needs to be a small, fairly low powered card because this is a small form factor PC. It has a good processor. It's got a Quad i7 with eight threads, 3.9 gigs as you can see. From the uh, the Conky here, um, however, it cannot take um, a high power, uh, you know, dedicated gaming card. Having said that, the GT 1030 that's in here manages well on anything that isn't a kind of blockbuster AAA current game. It'll even play those if you really need it to, but you'd need to turn your settings down to low maybe to get reasonable frame rates. But on anything else, it thunders along perfectly well. Uh, it's doing this video capture. It's using 14% CPU, as you can see there, and I'm not using a hardware um, encoder for this. This is just running with processor encoding, so uh, not taxing things at all at the moment on here. So, so, so very good. Um, we'll get rid of Steam. So that still appears to be running. We'll close that, using up some memory. So that's pretty much it in terms of applications. Now the theming on this is, uh, as I say, it's taken, uh, I pinched it from Arch Labs um, and then modified it. Now the backdrop is also taken from Arch Labs, but um, the colouring I've changed on that. The logo here I've changed on it. Uh, the conky colour here is also changed. The colour of the fonts, uh, the colour of the uh, text is changed. Uh, the menu is also different, uh, again, different fonts. Um, instead of just highlighting the font, it actually swaps the background with the font color as you come down. So again, that's done, and that's all done within the configuration files within Openbox, uh, and also, of course, in uh, Conkey, and within the Tint2 panel. 
the Shinto panel as well is doesn't look like this by default um, I've uh, I've actually changed this so that um, uh, so that it looks this has this grey look to it so that the active desktop is grey and the, uh, the the non active desktop is black and you can switch those as you can see there um, I have no launchers on the panel some people do like to have quick launch icons down here uh, I don't really see any point in that on Openbox uh, you can launch here from the menu you can launch from the key bindings and you can launch up here from D menu so you've got three means of launching programs at your fingertips you don't really need to have another set of icons down here to give you a fourth set of launch options so I'd rather it um, it'd be used just to display uh, currently running applications so here simple screen recorder is running icon for it down here uh, just shows that that is running and if we hover obviously we get the little notification there speaking of notifications down here in the bottom right um, this is where any notifications would appear um, we've got clipboard which just shows recently uh, clipped items we've got network we've got power management which will just open the power manager settings that's uh, borrowed from the XFC environment so uh, works very well and volume standard volume and if we hit mixer it brings up the um, mixer control panel as we saw previously so that's just about it that's a walk around of um, of the desktop as I say I really like this I've probably spent about two weeks now since this officially launched it was in beta for a couple of months um, it was based on an older version of uh, Debian before that that's based on Debian Jesse it's now based on stretch um, oh just on that let me just let me just show you something um, one of the criticisms that's often leveled at uh, Debian and Debian stable is that it doesn't contain the most recent packages and that that puts the user at a disadvantage well there's two thoughts on that firstly what the reason you would use Debian stable in the first place is that you actually want a stable operating system that isn't going to be uh, presenting you with uh, dozens of updates on a weekly basis which is what you'll find on some of the rolling releases and you're always at the risk in those situations of breaking the system when you do that many updates to your system so you don't get that with Debian stable what you get um, is what you're provided with other than essential updates and security updates so there's much less chance of your uh, your system crashing or falling over um, on the stable base um, if you really really must uh, add applications to the system that um, aren't in the stable repos you can do it so long as you just use your head so what do we do here we'll come down to system we'll launch synaptic package manager which is the GUI package manager this system and then what you see here is it will list in here all of the packages that are available within the stretch repositories this system also includes something called stretch backports now backports is an additional set of repositories um, whereby software that was released after the main stretch repository was uh, repository was settled and finalized um, can be included and uh, you can you can basically include that uh, that additional repository when you're adding software however <coughs> excuse me however you can also pull stuff in from the um, the testing and the unstable repositories if you absolutely have to and I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way of doing that so if you go into settings if you go into repositories it will list them in here <clears throat> so the highlighted ones are the active ones the third one up is the main Debian stretch stable repository for um, uh, what's called uh, main non-free contrib so that'll include anything that is uh, within the main repository but also stuff that's uh, that's non-free so non-free software as well so things like your codex that um, are proprietary software you'll find in that uh, that particular repository now what you can do uh, now 
I'll, this needs this with uh, with caution, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But if you go in here and you change this to Sid, and you save it, and you reload, what you've now done is included the Sid repository and any packages that that may contain in this list. So if you were now to go and search for something and install it, it will pull in the current version, be it stable or be it unstable. Now, if you've done your research and you know 100% that the package you're looking for will work, is tested and is not likely to break your system, then by all means go ahead and install it using this method. It will also list anything else that it needs to pull in order to make that package work. So just be aware just review the list of packages that this presents you with to make sure that nothing in that is going to break your system and if you're happy with that go ahead and install it once you've done it then please remember to go back in back into repositories select again and change it back you must 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 change this back to stretch if you forget and you don't do that, the next time you do a system update, your system will try to update hundreds of packages and trust me, it will break. So take warning, but it's there if you need it. Um, it does allow, you know, sometimes there's something essential that comes along. You think I really must have that or I really must have that update to make something work. Well, there are options. Uh, you can do it. Just use your head. So that's synaptic. Uh, anything else before we wind this up? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, we've seen Steam, we've got accessories, we've got file search. That's uh, catfish file search, really useful application. Let you um, let you search for files anywhere on the system, on any of your drives. Um, really, really useful. Uh, we've got hard information, so this would show us um, a bit like the old Windows um, uh, control panel. We used to be able to go in there and view every aspect of your system that performs pretty much the same uh, same function. Um, we've got a drop-down terminal installed as well, and that's called Quake. Uh, and I'll show you that. Um, I won't select it here though. What I'll do, it's actually keyed to a hotkey, so it's key, key to um, to get the drop down terminal, it's Alt and F12. Alt F12 will start that running. As you can see, it's now down here in the system tray. F12 again will toggle it off and on. So, and that's useful because if you're um, if you're working within a browser and you've got different windows open here, um, it's useful just to be able to pull this down while you've got um, the rest of your applications open on the screen. Um, do any work you need to in the terminal and then when you're finished you just make it go away so it's quite a nice little terminal it doesn't replace um, a good old faithful terminator but it's a nice useful addition to have um, uh, within the system uh, you can uh, do tiling this is a floating window manager but you can actually do some fairly basic rudimentary tiling without installing a tiling window manager um, you'll see that um, over here on the con key we've got um, super plus arrow keys gives you tiling functionality so let's just for example open a web browser uh, super arrow will move it over there to the right <coughs> we can stretch it up we can stretch it down we can set it to half we can open another one we can pop that over there Like so, so it's not a tiling window manager, but it kind of sort of uh, gives you some of that um, functionality if you need that. I do have a tiling window manager installed on this system. It's actually the i3 window manager, which will do that sort of thing much much more effectively um, you just select it at uh, login and all it would do is it'll just log you into uh, an i3 
tiling with the manager session instead of the open box um, with access to all the installed applications. So that's a, a useful alternative. We're back to um, this ghastly wedding again. So let's get rid of that. <coughs> So that is uh, Bunsen Labs. It's Bunsen Labs Helium. So not quite themed as it comes out of the box. The default theming, by the way, is uh, very nice. It's a nice um, refresh of the traditional Crunchbang type theme. Um, so you know, please do check it out. Uh, it's great out of the box, uh, but you can you can customize it to your heart's content. Uh, in fact, the Bunsen Labs um, uh, community are extremely friendly, um, always um, respond quickly to inquiries and uh, posts over on their forum. Um, they're a very active community. And one of the one of the reasons why I think um, I chose this distribution over some of the others was certainly down to the, uh, the activity on their forum. I'll show you here. This is the Bunsen Labs website. So it's I simply put together a website, but if you go to the forums, <coughs> you'll see it's um it's pretty active. You know, recent lots of recent posts, uh, including some from me asking dumb questions, but uh, that's how it goes. Uh, very very good forum, so always a positive and always um, a good reason to uh, to use a particular distribution. So I hope that was useful. I don't intend to make many uh, Linux type um, or Linux subject videos on the channel. Maybe one or two more around this, but um, this is an electronics channel primarily. But uh, I thought this might be a bit of useful information to um, anyone interested in uh, in Bunsen Labs. So please do give it a go. Thank you for watching, and see you soon.